Well, here we are at the Ainsley Racecourse, home to the world's most famous horse race. It's very apt, actually, because all my own research at Liverpool John Moores University has been looking at uh, the health of jockeys and how weight making every day impacts their health. The whole reason I actually got involved with horse racing, and particularly jump racing, is because I actually attended the race course in 1979, saw the race for myself, and was inspired to actually go and work in horse racing myself, as I wanted to be a jump jockey. And fortunately enough, I actually got the chance to do it. I did ride, I had about 50 rides as a jockey, actually rode one winner, but there, with the job comes making weight, so I've experienced all the downsides of making weight, doing the dehydration, and also doing all those methods which aren't the best for your health. So obviously, if you're dehydrating a lot and you're not eating food, there's going to be a downside to that on your health. And we found that long-term chronic dehydration can actually cause things like kidney stones. Um, also, there has been some uh, downsides to mental health. Plus, I've looked at performance and seen that actually pushing a horse on a simulated race ride was impacted from being dehydrated. And similarly, strength and reaction time have both been impacted. So put all those things together, and you, you've got a recipe pretty much for underperformance, but also compromising your health. So firstly, understanding energy expenditure. That was how much energy a day a jockey was burning. Then showing that you can still eat sufficient food that still would allow you to lose body fat, uh, but you, you will still be able to eat. So by bringing all the jockeys into Liverpool John Moores University and undertaking all the tests, such as our DEXA test where we looked at the body composition, we could show the jockeys that they did have some body fat to lose. And the best thing to do was not just to keep dehydrating so your weight was going up and down, yo-yoing in effect. Get your body fat down to its lowest, safest minimum weight. And again, from the science, we could show them how to do that. But also you need to fuel yourself to perform as a jockey because it is quite high intensity exercise. So once the jockeys realized that they could lose body fat, fuel themselves and perform, then they started buying into the program. So straight away, they were telling other jockeys, and before we knew it, we had the whole shop floor, so to speak, coming to see us. It's the British Horse Racing Authority that run horse racing in Great Britain, and they actually bought in to our findings, showing that jockeys could be healthier and happier. As a result of some of our research in 2013, actually the minimum weight was actually raised because we were showing that the jockeys entering the sport were getting taller and heavier, and the minimum weights and the weights that were around were pretty archaic. To date, we must have seen over 400 jockeys since 2009. I even get international jockeys now coming to see us. Other authorities, including Australia and Hong Kong, even the USA. We've had the Jockey Club, now called the British Horse Racing Authority on board, supporting our findings. We've got the Professional Jockeys Association, who are the body that looks after the welfare of jockeys, buying into what we're doing, sending their members up. And if you think about the occupational hazards associated with race riding, particularly over fences like here at Aintree, at 35 mile an hour, you want to be in the best condition you can be. You don't want to be dehydrated. You don't want your reaction time compromised and you certainly don't want your strength compromised. Therein, our research has impacted positively and is in the interest of athlete welfare.